It's not the government's job to tell me to wear a mask or for them to tell me where to go and how far to stand away from somebody. And welcome back to This Week in Pennsylvania. We are joined now by House Majority Leader, Representative Kerry Benninghoff. Thanks so much uh, for joining us. New uh, House Majority Leader, you've been there a couple of weeks. How's it going? I'm very busy. No dull <laughs> moments, but very enjoyable. Let's, uh, let's pick up on what Representative Cox was just saying there, because I do think um, people talk about the politiz politicization of this pandemic. A lot of it is the, just basically a fundamental belief in what the role of government is. And that's what Representative Cox was talking about, thinking that in this state that there's been governmental overreach. Do you agree with him? There are a lot of people who have different opinions about the masks and different overreaches. Uh, we as a General Assembly and as a body, we believe in safety. We think it's important. Uh, individual members have their own belief. But to me, it's not an and or if type issue. Uh, we believe that you can be safe, protective, and still reopen uh, the public to the best of our ability, get some businesses open, and try to get our economy growing uh, as a whole. I know I've seen you in the Capitol. You do wear a mask. Do you think, do you agree with this, the science that seems to be growing, that people should be wearing masks and socially distancing to get this, uh, this virus under control? Uh, I'm not a scientist, so I can't really, com um, really comment on the science. I think the mask have become symbolic for some people of their frustration of all the constraints that they feel the government has put on them and some of the uh, orders or blanket orders as they see them from the governor's office. I think the most recent one shutting down restaurants to 25% capacity uh, in many of the rural areas who've had little less than four or five COVID cases since its inception in March uh, seems like an overstretch. So people get frustrated. And when you see small business owners, some of them are multiple generations uh, worrying about losing a business that may have been in their family for 60, 70, 80 years. It is scary. It's frightening. Uh, I've dealt with a lot of families who are struggling with the unemployment, struggling for employment in general. And when you don't have any money come in to help supply for your family, it makes people frustrated and scare. And some of these other issues really kind of uh, get escalated because of it. There's a lot of critics of, of some of the shutdowns and some of the things the governor's doing. But if I made you governor for a day, what would you do differently than what he's doing? I think the biggest important thing that we as a legislature would like to have is better communications. Uh, we find that if you remember early on, we had a proposal to put a task force together that would include the House, the Senate members, as well as somebody from the administration. We felt that that type of task force would have kept us all in the loop. Uh, that was not supported by the administration. And then in return, most of these orders come out, we're told a little bit ahead of time, sometimes not always told ahead of time, and so I think what I would want is better communication. Uh, we'd like to actually see some of the data that people refer to and some of the science. Uh, we've seen things changing. And in one breath, we're told uh, the locals can make up their decisions about whether schools can be open or not, but yet we're being heavily recommended to not have fall sports. Those kinds of conflicting messages, I think, is really what gets people frustrated and this kind of arbitrary 25% uh, open, 50% open, back to 25% open. You know, early on when they were giving out waivers, I think it was very frustrating for some businesses when they saw like businesses in a neighboring county or a neighboring township that were given permission to be open while they were not. Well, let me, let me interrupt you for just a minute. Hoods. Well, let me just interrupt for a minute because we got, we got school that's supposed to start in the next couple of weeks. In your yes. view, should kids be in school, in-person learning or yes. hybrid when, when or it, online? Well, whenever possible, I think they should be in classes the best of their ability. We know people learn better. Uh, you and I have experienced the diff technical difficulties that you can have trying to do this stuff online. Uh, while I commend those who do this as a profession for the online learners, uh, a lot of our schools are not equipped for this. A lot of them don't have the manpower to do it, the technology and or the uh, training in an acute basis. And we saw that at the end of last year's school year, and many kids had a very poor experience. At the end of the day, I think if you look even to Pediatric Academy of Pediatrics and some other well-known organizations, fully support trying to get children back to school. As I said, we can do it safely. Uh, we teach kids to wear helmets. We teach them to wear seat belts. We teach them to do all types of things. And I think we can teach them to act safely as, as parents, as coaches, as teachers. I think we can collectively do this because at the end of the day, it's really about how good of a quality experience are our children having in their education. And last question, I, 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 I want to get one last question, and I have to ask a guy who represents a, a, a state college, the Penn State area, Penn State canceled football. A, how big of a blow was that? 
for a guy from the area. But B, how can the PIAA and high school have sports if something like Penn State has already canceled? Well, frankly, I think PIAA's whole mission is about protecting children. I think they'll make the right decision here. And if the governor thinks it's good enough to make decisions about opening school on the local level, we can do the same thing with sports. Back to Penn State, obviously we were surprised by that, uh, obviously saddened by that, uh, not only just for the entertainment of it all, but more importantly, the local economy depends very heavily on this. And this is a, com a commodity, pardon me, in an economy that has been crippled already through the students not being here through the remainder of last year and the housing, the restauranteurs, and all these other different businesses. Kerry? Downtown Stug Hill is, might be in very serious shape economically. Thank you very much. We hope to have you on again real soon. We really appreciate it. Good to your talk time. to you. Thank you for your coverage. All right. Stay with us. Much more this week in Pennsylvania when we come right back.